What is up everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at a new Pokemon, Galarian Zapdos. Galarian Zapdos is a flying and fighting typing with high attack and some very hard hitting moves in counter, close combat and brave bird. This thing is gonna almost one shot or get one shot by every single Pokemon. So I'm very excited to get into these battles. These were submitted to me by Ethan, so thank you very much. Let's go. First game, we got Deoxys into Azumarill. Definitely not an ideal lead uh, for Azumarill, since Deoxys, of course, does usually pack Thunderbolt, which will do quite a bit of damage. And you ideally want Sableye on this. Uh, but at least Zapdos gets to avoid it now, which is nice. Gonna take this first Thunderbolt, since Azumarill is a tank. And I'm gonna overfarm here and go for the play rough. This does a decent chunk to the Yoxus as well. Like, this is a pretty even matchup. Even though the Yoxus is hitting super effective with Thunderbolt, it's also hitting resisted with counters. So, I would say this is uh, kind of even, but slightly in the Yoxus's favor. They're generally gonna shoot up another Thunderbolt right there. And a Snorlax comes in, gonna chip it a little bit with this Ice Beam. And then I would guess you go into uh, Zapdos to start countering this thing down. Oh, look at this animation, by the way. One of the best animations in the game. Snorlax is going to go for a body slam. Do you take this? Do you do take this? Better than I was expecting, actually. But it still did a ton of damage. This uh, Snorlax almost knocks out uh, the Zapdos. Going to go for the Brave Bird on this Deoxys. Are we going to see a no shield? Oh, they let it go and they get one shot. A uh, bye-bye. In comes a Registeel now. All right. This is, this is looking all right for Ethan. But definitely not ideal, since both Zubro and Sable, I don't do too good here. Whoa! I think you really want to throw your play rough there immediately. Uh, but at least, I, I think I think you're still fine. I don't think you need that play rough damage. You hit three foul plays now on the Registeel, and you should be able to win this matchup. One Zap Cannon doesn't knock out the Sableye, unless Ethan is running a very shitty Sableye. Uh, but I think it's pretty good IV. Uh, yeah, this... Uh, this, this doesn't do enough. Yeah, this doesn't do enough. Now you're just going to be able to get the two foul plays right and uh, and knock it out. One foul play coming through. These are debuffed, so it might still get close. Next one should knock out the Reggie Seal after they hit the Zap Cannon here. But yeah, this game is looking over. That that Zapdos put in quite a bit of work. Uh, farming down the Snorlax and then Brave Birding the Deoxys. Man, that was, uh, that was pretty nice. Yeah, game over. GG's. All right, next game we get Jellicent into Azumarill. Not an ideal lead for Azumarill since you do generally lose this. If you're doing resisted with bubbles and they're doing neutral with hex and shadow balls. But you're also hitting back for neutral with play rough. So you make this extremely close, even though you do generally uh, lose this matchup. That's completely fine though. If you can make the Zapdos avoid this Jellicent, you're in a pretty good spot. Just gonna start firing off. Uh, these play roughs do a decent chunk. Second one coming through here, but not before Jensen wins CMP with another Shadow Ball, I assume. It is a Shadow Ball. Brings the Azumarill very low. But still able to get to the play rough. This is pretty big. Gonna bring the Jellicent quite low. Oh, before I forget, since I know there's gonna be comments um, about this. You see that circle in the top right? That's not a spoofing app, guys. Every time I see that circle come up in any kind of video, people are always making comments like, Oh, shit. It's a joystick. It's not a joystick, all right? That's, I think it's called assistive touch. It's a feature on iOS, which I think if you push that button, like a menu comes up with like the, the basic iOS things. Uh, so not that spoofing app, guys, all right? Anyway, back into the battle. They switch in Sableye to catch a ball beam. In comes Drapion. Not the worst for Sableye since he was able to grab a shield with return. And now it's just uh, everything on Zapdos. All right, can you farm down this Drapion? I think you can, but you're gonna need to shield two Sludge Bombs here. This Sludge Bomb would basically have to knock out. So this is not ideal, but if you end up with like two moves, you might be able to one shot whatever is in the back. Oh, Incomes and Jellicent again. Tried to catch a move, didn't work out, but still gets to a move. This should only be a Bubble Beam though. So very good no shield by Ethan here. Gonna farm down this Jelly. Your attack has dropped though, so you might wanna switch to Azu at some point. And he does beautifully catches a sludge bomb along the way as well oh never mind just a crunch but still that is super super fine now what is in the back oh it's a venusaur throws a close combat if the venusaur no shoots here this is big trouble this is big trouble whoa they no shoot that move that is insane but you'll still be able to get to two close combats damn that is 
real nice. Holland shields the first one. A little bit of a weird animation since it was a CMB tie. Shield up his friends he planned, and now he should be able to close combat the Venusaur. Bye. Bye, Venusaur. Let's go! Wow, another Deoxys lead. Let's see if he plays it out the same way. I would, I would assume so. He's just staying with uh, Azumarill here. And uh, start throwing his play roughs. Opponent throws the Thunderbolt right here. Uh, just gonna let it go like the last time. Wow, this time it seemed a bit more. Maybe because they threw a couple more counters before throwing the Thunderbolt. Gonna fire off the play rough here. Put uh, the Deoxys into the yellow. Now we're gonna overfarm another Thunderbolt comes through. I think you survived this just barely. Right? Oh my god. You do. You do. And wow. <laughs> You get to the play rough still as well. All right, this is this is beautiful because now the Deoxys is in farm down range for even the Zapdos. I think you should you could consider going and Zapdos there actually. Yeah, get two counters. That is nice. Getting a little bit of energy lead on Zapdos is pretty huge. In comes a Noctowl. Noctowl is a big core breaker for this team. Beats both Zapdos and Sableye. This is not looking too good unless he can hit this Brave Bird. Oh my, they let it go, and he switches into the Sableye, trying to do Shadow Claw down, but the Swampert comes in. Wow, I can't believe they let that go. That's insane. What, what, what were they expecting? What were they expecting? I don't know, but this is looking pretty good for Ethan right now, since he just he can just start throwing off these foul plays, and the Swampert can't really farm down. Wow, multitasking as well. Ethan is showing some real skills right here. Yeah, gonna let this Hydro go. I think at this point, just counter down. With the Zapdos, these Merch Shots are doing nothing. You can just shield up these moves. The Noctowl doesn't even have a Sky Attack, I think. They're at least one away. Even two, but it dies in one counter, so it doesn't... Oh, oh, never mind. Never mind, they were at the move. So, luckily, Ethan decided to sh save a shield, shield a Sky Attack, and then farm down the Noctowl. GG. All right, well, this is a really good lead. Talon Flame into Azumarill. This is definitely what you want to see. A Brave Bird would hurt, though, which I assume they're going to fire off now. Do you shield this? It does hurt, but yeah, you no know, shield it. It doesn't do that much. They bring in Azu. Ooh, kind of wish you shielded that now, I think, because Azumarill was kind of rough for this squad. You know, I like how um, Ethan's team kind of functions similar uh, to the Azu double ghost line. I, uh, I used to run, or still run, uh, quite a bit, where you have Azumarill on the lead, Sableye safe switch to bring out, like, fairies, uh, and then Zapdos in the back. So once the Sableye has lured out the fairy, uh, Zapdos is pretty free to sweep. Well, not entirely, since Zapdos has more weaknesses than just fairies, but fairies are the biggest problem. So, I like it. I like it. Anyway, wow, they let the return go. Sableye showing what a beast it is. In comes the Talon Flame. You're barely going to be able to reach this foul play. Probably going to take a shield here. I would guess you do. Probably bring in the Azumarill. You have enough health. Oh, actually, going to bring the Zapdos. All right. I like this. I like this. Going to go for a cheeky farm down, maybe. Maybe try to catch the next one. Like here. Oh, that's unfortunate. But you will still be able to farm this down and you have two moves loaded to fire off at whatever is in the back. It is a matter cham. Gonna go for the close combat bait here. A bit risky, but will it pay off? Oh, they do shield. You reach the Brave Bird and this should one-shot the matter cham right here, right? Oh, bye-bye. Wow. And you farm down the Zapdos. GG. I really love the way Ethan is playing these games. He's just making sure Zapdos has two moves to close off the game. To first take off a shield and then just destroy the opponent. Very well done. All right, and Polion lead. This is an interesting one. Polion, usually with a lot of Ninetales or Mandibuzz in the back. Uh, so wants to lure that out. Could play bring in the Sableye. Ideally, you want your Zapdos on that and Polion. So let's hope he can realign that later or uh, get shields down. Would be nice too. This is really not that bad of a matchup for Sableye. Some, some Sableyes can survive through foul plays here and get the two returns. I think this Sableye is not tanky enough. Uh, or, or the Menabuzz is like too attack weighted. It's like very, very IV dependent. If you have like an... Yeah, I think this mana is... It's 1479, so it's probably pretty attack weighted, I would guess. If it's like a rank 1, Sableye probably reaches two returns. 
anyway. Now you can get a bunch of energy on Azu, but the opponent doesn't allow that, so switches the Empoleon back in, and this is really nice for Ethan, since he can start loading up with this Galarian Zapdos. Should be able to fully farm this down before the next move. Really nice. The Benibus comes back in. That is fine. It's running Snarl as a fast move, which means... Uh, whoa, Galarian Zapdos resist, but it's Altaria in the back. Wow. Are they going to let this Brave Bird go? They are not. Damn, I would have loved to see how much that would have done. Uh, honestly, this was a very weirdly played by the opponent. The opponent has two Pokemon extremely weak to Azumarill in the back with Menabuzz and Altaria. And still, they decided to give up Switch Advantage. They really should have kept Switch Advantage and then had the Empoleon versus the Azumarill. So, then they, honestly, then the opponent might have won. But, uh... They played it like this, and uh, we'll take that. We will take that for sure. Uh, CMP Town, the Aerial Ace right, a right there. Not that big of a deal. Just gonna Ice Beam the Mendebus right now, and then you should be able to Ice Beam the Altaria, which at this point, I think, should knock out after the little bit of chip that has been done. Oh, it doesn't knock out quite yet, but easy bubble down. The opponent knows, concedes the match. GG. That's a 5 0 set to start. Very nice. Next up, we start with an extremely bad lead with Registeel into the Azu. You have to switch in your Sableye here. This is not an ideal situation just because uh, the Registeel can easily take this foul play and hit you with a big Zap Cannon and then dip out. I find this to be a very difficult decision always. On the one hand, you want to shoot the Zap Cannon since it does a lot of damage. On the other hand, you're going to be debuffed. So your energy is going to be pretty useless if they bring something in. Not if they bring in a Trevenant, though, because Trevenant isn't good versus Sableye, so they actually have to shield. This is definitely not ideal either, though. Trevenant beats Azu, Trevenant beats Zapdos. Oh, this is looking to be pretty rough, but Azu can take two Seed Bombs quite easily, and then you can probably get to a couple uh, Ice Beams here, hopefully, or at least one Ice Beam. Yeah, they throw another Seed Bomb. Probably not wanna, don't want to shield here. The only issue is, if they shield the Ice Beam now. If, if they shield the Ice Beam, you're in real trouble. They don't shield the Ice Beam. That is huge. They're probably going to bring the Registeel again. So Ethan is getting ready. Tapping on that Zapdos. Or oh, is he going to be able to farm down this Registeel before they get to a move? Oh, he is not. Definitely got to shield this up. A Zap Cannon would one-shot. Oh, man. Dropping the... Zapdos' attack might become huge here, especially since the Deoxys comes in. A Brave Bird would almost one-shot this, but now with the attack drop, probably not. Oh, which is why they decide to no shield. Oh, this is rough. They can also just double Psycho Boost here, right? If one goes for a Thunderbolt, that's a huge mistake. Go for Rock Slide, interesting. Yeah, definitely should have just gone for Psycho Boost right there. Going for a close combat, this will take a shield, but I think they've CMP tied, so we can't even switch out to catch anything. Maybe Azumarill can still clean this up, but I don't think you'll be able to get to a move before the Deoxys. Yeah, Deoxys. Psycho Boost loaded, gonna knock out the Azumarill. G. G, very rough matchup for Ethan there. A another Jelly lead. We've seen how this goes. It's a pretty close matchup. Jelly generally wins, but Azu brings it very close with two player roughs. So just gonna stay in since you don't definitely don't want your Zapdos aligned to this later. Don't have the first Shadow Ball go. Go for another uh, play rough right here. If it's the same team as we saw earlier, which was Drapion and I can't remember the third, but usually it's some kind of Registeel counter uh, fighter that doesn't lose to like Sableye or like a fire type, like a Ninetales. Something like a Scrafty or an Obstagoon makes sense as well. Here we go, it's a Scrafty. Exactly. This is not too bad of a matchup for Sableye at all. Return like does like 80, 70 ish percent, percent, I think. So the opponent respects. Shield set up. Ethan, not gonna respect this foul play. Since since you foul play baited there, you can actually get to another return versus this Scrafty uh, without getting countered down. You gonna shoot up this move? He doesn't. I think it's a pup. Yeah, this is just a pup. That's huge. Gonna get to another return right here. I think he knocks out the Scrafty. They don't shield. Oh, wow. Yeah, gonna get another shield. All right, well, you have two Scrafty answers. 
your Azu doesn't have like any HP. So probably want to go into the Zapdos here and just start farming. Just start farming. Yeah. Wow, these counters are doing a lot though on Zapdos too. Even though... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Well, can't say I was counting, but Ethan was and he called the Power of Punch bait. That's huge. Gonna be able to Brave Bird the Needle Queen out of existence right now. That was really nice. In comes the Jettison. Bubble down. In comes the Scrafty. Will you be able to get to an Ice Beam? Probably would have. So the opponent concedes that match. Oh, wow. Zapdos, when shields are down, just goes to town. It's insane. GG. All right, Azumarill lead. I'm very curious to see how he likes to play this one. Now, the way I usually play out Azumarill mirror leads whenever I have Sableye in the back is to lose switch advantage. You want to let your Azumarill go down to bring in your Sableye and start building up that energy. Since most Azumarill lead teams are pretty weak, to Sableye in the back. However, the opponent is actually running Hydro Pump, it seems, which is super interesting in this meta, actually. I would never recommend not running Play Rough here. Oh, what's happening? Okay, we're back. Uh, because you need Play Rough for Warring. Uh, but the opponent doesn't, so this makes it very easy for Ethan to win out this matchup, honestly. Then my rule of letting Azumarill go probably doesn't work out, since, well, you'd have to overfarm a ton here. And you end up with enough health anyway. Oh, wait, Ice Beam? Oh, what? Hmm. This is weird. This is not gonna knock out. But, but, but Ethan is a genius. All right. Ethan is a genius. What? They shield it? That is wild. That is, another one? This wouldn't kill? Oh, oh, gets a refund. What well, helps uh, a bit. Is able to bring in the Basidon freely now. Or the Zapdos freely now against this Basidon. I'm gonna shield this up. These counters are doing... A ton of damage, but look at what these smackdowns are doing. That is wild. That's a double super effective counter versus neutral smackdown. And the Zapdos got into the yellow. Actually kind of ridiculous. That's just the bulk difference right there. Ooh, in comes Metacham versus Zapdos. Gonna go for the, another close combat. What does get shielded? It does get shielded. That's fine. That's actually really good. Because now you just bring in your uh, Azu, actually. Or... It doesn't really matter what you do now. Either Azu or Sableye, it really doesn't matter. The Metacham has nowhere to go against this team at this point. GG. Dude, Deoxys are everywhere. This is insane. Deoxys lead is so common. I was playing some games myself yesterday, and I'm I'm like... I mean, this is not to flex. This is just to, to prove a point. I'm like 700 elo higher which generally means a different meta. And I'm also seeing Deoxys, like, in half my games. It's insane. I don't even think Deoxys is that good in the current meta. But Deoxys' lead is just everywhere. It's like two or three every set. It's it's wild. You want to gain elo right now? It seems like Sableye lead is just the way to go. It's just the way to go. Talk about Sableye. Brings it into the Deoxys right now. In comes a Umbreon. Gonna go for returns. This is really not that bad of a matchup for Sableye. Return is a ton of damage. And you can survive two foul plays. You wanna fire removes at appropriate timing though. This first return was thrown at a bit of a bad timing since they got a snarl through. But still shouldn't matter that much, I think. Because you still survive this second foul play. And then get to another return on the CMP. Yes. Very nice. Very, very nice. Because he got a little bit of energy advantage on the Deox, he's able to CMP tie with this return, which is just huge. Taking a shield and taking all the Umbrian's energy. This is looking pretty good, because the Zapdos should be able to fully farm this down and then have move lo moves loaded for whatever is in the back. Ooh, Umbrian does get to another move, though. This should only be a foul play, though, so Ethan lets it go. I like that a lot. I don't like this, though. Oh, this is, uh, yeah, yikes. Ooh. That's an Alola Nine Tails, and that is not what you want to see. Yeah, they shoot it up too. That is very unfortunate. Just a hard counter game, really. They had a Dark Type for the Sableye, a Charmer for the Zapdos. That's impossible. Well played by Ethan, though, but I uh, couldn't really make it happen. GG. All right, anyway, next game we have Swampert a lead into the Azumarill. This is a pretty even matchup. Uh, most Swamperts these days run Earthquake, I found. So this becomes better, but the odd 
the odd uh, sludge wave swamp definitely hurts Azuburo quite a bit. But as you can see, even though it's super effective, Azu takes it like a champion. He's able to uh, switch out into a Sableye and store up a bunch of energy. Man, I, I think you should might, maybe should have thrown that energy. Oh, is she gonna let that go? And not get to another move. Okay. Whoa, why didn't they bring this thing in earlier? Okay, interesting. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, this is really bad. <laughs> oh, this is really bad. I don't understand why they didn't bring in the Alota Ninetales earlier versus the Sableye, but it, you know, it's not really gonna matter, is it? The Alota Ninetales is still very much alive. Uh, and the Zapdos soon won't be. Uh, that's what's important. Yeah. Oh my goodness, these charms are doing so much damage. Well, that's one way to uh, end Zapdos, end the video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed Zapdos. Definitely a very, very fun Pokemon. I really hope I get one off of my daily instance soon. Guys, let me know if you've gotten any Galarian birds from your instance yet. I I've actually had one, but it ran, which is very sad. But, you know, I'm still enjoying the daily instance a lot, so hopefully soon anyway thanks ethan a lot for sharing these battles these were great thank you all see you on the next video good luck your battle trainers